In 2020, while we were all stuck in our houses, Mojang gave us infinite places to explore in the infinite update. It added over 2 billion dimensions which you can explore by throwing a book through a portal. Most of them are ridiculous and completely unplayable. Some of them will kill you the second you step inside. Oh no, no, no. But I want to see if you can beat this game hopping through random dimensions. And the video starts with a bit of normal Minecraft speedrunning, but I'm looking for different things. Welcome. <laughs> Someone just followed on Twitch. But I'm looking for different things. I killed some cows for leather, some sugar cane for paper, and a few chickens for a feather. Stopping off at a nearby acacia village to grab enough iron for flint and steel, and looting a desert temple since I didn't get to do one in my last hundred days. With one bucket in hand, I'm a lot better at making nether portals now. So I was able to get one together crafting two written books. One where I put my name in and the other which we'll get to in a second. With everything thrown into the lava, so we're starting with a blank slate. I threw the first book in and went through the portal. I spent a little bit more exploring my own personal dimension, smashing up as many bonus chests as I could, killing a zombie villager that attacked me and generally being pretty excited. This is an amazing start for this challenge and sets me up for success. The only problem is I'm not going to be able to get back here for a very, very long time. But now it's time for us to actually try to, you know, beat this thing. To do that, we need this book. This book is going to take us... This book is going to take us somewhere special. Nope. I'm having a moment here. Okay, now we go somewhere special. This is the library dimension, an infinite source of books that will allow me to go dimension hopping, and one of 43 hard-coded dimensions in this update. And these bookshelves will give us books that we can then throw into the portal and see what happens. Let's go to the next one. Wait, <laughs> we're in the end. Okay, are we on like the outer end islands? No, this is like a central and is there a dragon here? It is legitimately just the moon. What's underneath the end stone? I need to know. Crimson logs. I am very green. Oh my goodness. And it's worth noting in case you see a random shot where I'm in the overworld, all of these portals go back to the overworld and then I had to go through back through the portal to get to the library dimension. I cut it out like 99% of the time. So now we know this block always takes us to weird moon portal. Let's test the next one. This one's potentially not the best. Let's leave. This is time to go. Okay, that block, bad block. Can we just break it? Cool, we just... That's not a good one. Here, let's, uh, bad block. The very next dimension I warped into was a fleet of end ships. Now, there wasn't an elytra there. There's this random book called Orders at the front, which was a little strange, but the infinite shulker boxes caused me just a few problems. Oh no. I'm gonna die if I, if I don't clip. Well, that sets the tone for this video. We're not gonna do this one in hardcore because there are way too many ways for this to go horribly wrong. But if I die in a dimension, that's lost to me for forever, including any gear that I took in with me. So grabbing another loadout, I started hopping random dimensions before my PC started being pushed to the limit. Oh my goodness, it's like seconds per frame. Oh, no, this is bad, we're leaving. With the ridiculously laggy dimension marked, I hopped through one that looked like it was slightly glitched, another that had had glitter and nail polish spilled all over it, another dimension filled with fossils and end chips, allowing me to pick up another orders book, and then two dimensions where I was going to be able to find pearls back to back. Some seem like perfectly normal jungles, just with really low render distance. Others have floors made out of netherite blocks. But as I keep dimension hopping, you get to find out why I don't put that special little make video succeed term in the title. And now you see why this wasn't a 100 days video, because uh, one minute here is going to cost us like 20 days to our overall time. <laughs> this isn't interstellar. All right, we're going to do a little montage of dimensions in the background as I explain my idea on how we're going to win this thing. See, in this update, end portals can still generate, but before we get to that point, we need to find a reliable source of ender pearls, check, 
blaze powder to be determined and some good armor and weapons and some food so we'll be able to survive that fight because i'm not going to try to kill the dragon with my bare hands when death means i don't even get to try again i'm grabbing books from bookcases marking them off with signs if they have anything useful and trapdoors if they're just random things finding whatever i can from each dimension wood from this random thing with the cubes some cobblestone from a normal looking taiga biome which allowed me to smelt up some charcoal and some iron so i can get some better tools and armor but i also find dimensions where just everything's made out of bedrock so what am I supposed to do with this? But after a couple more dimensions hops, I was finally able to acquire some dirt and some bamboo, which I could grow up to get a little source of renewable sticks. And here's where you realize it's not exactly infinite dimensions. There's basically types. There's the kind of looks like the nether biome. There's the random stuff everywhere biome and sky islands with nether fortresses that spawn dragons. And while a good portion of this is a crazy technicolor mess, you can't sleep on these dimensions. They're definitely still dangerous. Oh, there's a wither, though. So. Oh, there's a bunch of withers, though. So. Oh, there's guardians, though. So. Nope, 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 nope. I can't lose my stuff. This is not good. Well, that's an awesome world. And goodbye. That's a huge loss. Being down to stone tools, no bucket, no flint and steel, very little food. I'm just glad it's not hardcore. And I'm doubly glad for the next world, which was made of iron blocks, which made life a lot easier. With basically infinite iron armor now at my disposal, as long as I don't mess up and die in that world, I continued dimension hopping through random ones, finding one made of lapis, one made of brown wool with glitch sides, and another where the sun was very close. Some dimensions, you could forget you're somewhere random. Others, there's string on every single block. And even more, the difficulty gets turned up to 11. That was terrifying. <laughs> Let's just never go back there again. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Oh, we gotta go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 Welp. That happened. I, I, I'm gonna... Oh, God. I'm gonna put a sign on that one too. <laughs> That's worth keeping. After that world completely melted my CPU, I went into the next few dimensions pretty light with just an ax and one or two pieces of fish just to do an initial check, get in, get out, see if it was a viable dimension at all. Some make this video nearly unwatchable on YouTube, but the rest were really the same kind of few places over and over just with a material palette swap. I did find one that looked like a village that generated in the end, and there was also raiders immediately there. So if I ever want a few totems, I can try that. But the combinations make for things that break your brain, like water that generates, but you can't put any down, or dimensions that are entirely made out of glass, floor to ceiling, except for the portal that you spawn in as. I'm grabbing whatever little bits of resources I can from each one, making a small little bit of crops. Even though the starter chest will get me set up, wheat and seeds will be useful for breeding mobs down the road. I did find one that was populated entirely with zombie villagers, where I was able to catch a friend Finally. Yay, I'm I'm not alone anymore. I don't think I'll ever be able to cure them, but you know what? Now they can hang out. And now we definitely have to win this thing. If not for me, for my villager friend. So let's grab some books and get exploring. And so that's exactly what I did. I spent a few hours just checking on random books throughout all of the library, trying to find dimensions that had things that were useful. Netherite stairs? I think they are. Money. 
It's entirely random, it's chaotic. There's areas where barrier blocks are everywhere. And having to deal with invisible barriers was really wild. But it swings so wildly from death, destruction, and chaos to just kind of weird to, oh yeah, the floor is made out of diamond blocks. Woohoo! Okay, this is perfect. Oh, that's a lot of danger right over there, too. Oh no. Okay. Let's get home with this much. Absolutely huge. I, I want to go get those netherite stairs. Do I have another place that was netherite blocks? Hold on, can we just upgrade twice very quickly? Oh, yes, we can! Oh, this is amazing! Diamond and or netherite gear, I finally moved the portal to a place that was a little bit more logical, and then resumed the hunt for any dimension that was remotely useful. The things I'm looking for at this point are chickens, cows, and sugarcane. That will allow me to actually write in books and guide myself to something reasonable. Instead of animals though, I found the most cursed stairs. Fancy stairs, fancy stairs, fancy, fancy, fancy stairs. The swaggiest stairs. How much did I lose? Okay, oh. Okay, that's not too bad. Which one of these was the bad place? I think it was that one. Nope, it was this one. <laughs> it was this one, oh no! I kept searching for hours, trying to find a dimension where passive mobs would spawn, eventually meeting up with all of my mods while they were watching on Discord as we we're getting things together. Dang. Yeah, mod commentary. With mod What's commentary for one clip, Sierra, I'm sorry that you have to deal with this. Uh -huh. and the voices, I know uh -huh. the voices uh -huh. make it hurt. Uh -huh. Tell Sierra. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do tell. Hi, Sierra. Sierra. Oh, Sierra. Oh. Hi, Sierra. buddy. You're gonna have to edit uh, our voices. <laughs> so, I mean, they're all on a- you're just on a separate track, so this shouldn't be hard. Oh. Are you guys recording? Badly. No. A little bit. Oh, no, you're not on a separate track. Hold on. Yes! <laughs> yes! Let's go! We win! But as I kept going, dimensions were getting weirder and weirder. Villages inhabited exclusively by pillagers. Dimensions made out of TNT with infinite withers. And so, 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 so much more. But no chickens and no cows. There's a couple days while I was filming this where you're only seeing a few seconds of a handful of dimensions where I was probably at it for two or three hours. A good chunk of these are trash. <laughs> Until I get lucky with the occasional one, like this mineshaft dimension, which was great. But I just keep checking dimensions for either passive mobs or blazes. I found giants, but neither of the things I was looking for. Until I warped into what can only be described as a dimension that forgot it was from the snapshot of weird dimensions. If I find a chicken somewhere in this reality, we are set. Not you. Chickens! Yes! Two feathers. Okay, we need a lot more feathers. 
a lot more feathers. This is the most normal dimension we've seen yet. After being able to successfully lure a few different passive mobs out into the library dimension, where I could actually breed them up and get feathers, I figured I'd plan ahead and spent a little bit of time standing in the water in that one end dimension killing Enderman to be able to get a full stack worth of pearls. Spending a little bit of time to just improve the overall farm for the sugar cane, we're turning a corner. But there was one horribly tedious thing that we needed to do. I needed a whole lot more obsidian. One eternity later. And now is where things get interesting, because now we can write books, which means we can pick specific dimensions. And there's a few Easter egg dimensions, which I know I'm gonna wanna visit. Here we go. First one of the Easter egg biome. Well, technically second, because I'm standing in one of them, but anyway. Oh, it's all the way over there, my goodness. Now, I don't know why, for a lot of these Easter egg dimensions, I spawned so far away, like a couple of hundred blocks, and it required going off to the slime block dimension just to get cheap, easy blocks for bridging. But this first one is a sky block world. It's just a fun little reference to old school content in Minecraft, and it really took me back. And while I do have leather and feathers, I don't have an infinite supply, so I want to keep popping around to random dimensions occasionally, just seeing what I could find. What I did find was a fight with an evoker, which was able to get me a totem. And this made me feel a lot more confident in completing the run. Because after that world, I found a world made of money. This would have been amazing for the 100 days with emeralds only that I had just yet completed. And the next world after that, once you got past all the floating skeletons, had an acacia village, which would allow me to trade with some of the villagers in here for some core resources. You know what? Let's try this one. Let's see what this one does. The orders. We've done that. We found this a couple times. Let's see where this puts us. Okay, so this does... It's just another world. That's, uh... That's a bit of a bummer. Let's do something that's gonna take a long time and be very tedious, but we desperately need to do it. Let's go get a bunch of obsidian. One eternity later. That took... way too long! But that is two stacks of obsidian, so now we have a lot of things that we can go visit. <laughs> With enough obsidian to support all of the portals for all of the different Easter egg dimensions I wanted to go to, oh, I don't need this anymore. I didn't want to constantly change those portals. Every book was extremely valuable. So I set up this section with 10 different portals inside, lit it up and headed off to the ant dimension, which had a single block in the center, which would run around changing blocks into something else. Oh, that's void. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I didn't realize that that was void. Patience. Can I, can I stop it? Ha <laughs> ha Well, uh, I think I broke this dimension. <laughs> oh no, whoops. Now, not all of these are useful. They kind of are just fun little experiments, either with random structures or with light being flipped. Darker areas being more visible, the more light you place down, the darker it is. So the only reason you can see anything right now is because it's nighttime. We put down this, it becomes pitch black. Oh no, it's about to become daytime, which means this is gonna become impossible to navigate. Let's get the sugar cane and then get out of here before it gets super dark. The blacklight world was fun and being able to get core resources like sugar cane right there means I'm gonna be able to make more books sooner, which allowed me to go visit other dimensions, including this one that had a ton of different colorful creeper faces or another that has gigantic endstone bridges as far as the eye can see. But there's even dimensions where it says in the wiki, don't load this one, it could crash your game. I think this is another one that could, oh. There goes a big chain of hoppers. Oh no, oh no. This is another one that might generate a stronghold. 
but uh, it's gonna be very laggy, so it's probably not a good idea. But I was able to go visit a checkerboard and then a chessboard, which I really think the names of these should potentially be flipped. Building out the sugarcane farms that were existing off on the side so I can keep making more books and keep visiting these Easter eggs. There's infinite fleets of end ships as far as the eye can see off to invade something, I guess, and a museum that contains every block in Minecraft. It's almost like they were predicting hardcore episodes a year before they happened. I nabbed a bookcase from that one to be able to write more books and thought, you know what? What if I could cure my friend here and get a villager trade out of them? I headed off to a dimension to get a spider eye that I could ferment, and then I was reminded I was missing something else. Oh, and we need blaze powder too. Okay, so we're back to needing blazes. Oh boy. So, being soft locked on progress in two different other categories for two of my main goals, I'm back on the search for a little bit of spicy dust. We need some blaze powder. And through all the worlds that I'm visiting, I'm starting to see the repetition, but I really love the different just chaos that comes with this kind of way of playing Minecraft. It's something completely new, completely different, and there are other Easter egg snapshots, if you maybe want to see me try those as well. But as I entered another dimension full of pride-themed cubes just everywhere as far as the eye can see, this place was full of mobs, and most importantly, blazes. I was able to kill a few of them, but the fire? That still kind of hurt, and it ended up actually having me run out of food. I was traveling between all these dimensions extremely lightly, and it kind of freaked me out, because there was also ravagers in this world. Maybe this is where Gertie ended up teleporting to? I put myself up on top of a cobblestone spire, paused my recording temporarily to go take care of something and go be dad upstairs, and then failed to restart it until after I was through the portal, which was right around the corner. With blaze powder collected, I realized I needed the other kind of spicy dust so I could actually throw the weakness potion. So I went back to that same colorful portal, killing a few creepers, grabbing a few extra blaze rods, jumping back through the portal and brewing up a splash potion of weakness, and throwing one of my golden apples in their gullet. I'm actually gonna have a friendly friend in this world in just a little bit of time. While they were busy shaking off the zombie virus, I built a whole new room of portals and a special place for them to stay safe so they wouldn't go falling to their death here in the library. And right after the zombie doctor came in, I had to go back and mine some obsidian. One eternity later. I think I have all the obsidian we need for the rest of this adventure. Uh, no. This is the worst. This is the worst part of this entire challenge. And there we go. An entire additional room dedicated to Easter egg dimensions. And we have two more portals here. So let's get grinding back on those. The only downside was my friend here was only trading me Depth Strider. And while it would only cost me one emerald, it wasn't really the enchantment I was looking for. Efficiency or protection would be basically the only things useful for this kind of run. The only problem was they weren't resetting their trades. So something about the day night cycle in this reality had them soft locked. So I thought, let me go off and see a new friend in another dimension. Somebody who had been isolated off on their own. Go away. Yeah. Hi, Bob. Bob has something kind of special that I want. Where is it? Oh, yes, here it is. A very fine item. It just says home sweet home. Was there any chance you want to come with me to the library dimension? Wait, no, Bob, where are you going? <laughs> Bob, come back. Bob, no! When I got back to the library, that little trip seemed to do them some good. And my librarian friend had turned into a leather worker, somehow. I went off to a dimension that looks like it's something straight out of Tron, throwing an eye, I saw it head off in a ways. And while it would be cool to try to take on the dragon right now, I only have two. So that really, there's no way that that's gonna open a portal. Plus, I wanna finish visiting all of the major Easter egg dimensions. Skygrid was up next, and there was a shulker box very close by where I spawned in. So I grabbed that and tried to get a command block. That one, you can't break. The sponge hypercube was a lot of fun to look at, but I ran out of blocks before being able to bridge there. And the only thing I wanted from the terminal dimension was to steal those blinky blocks so I could take them back to the base and make a somewhat ominous looking smiley face. As I was starting to wrap up my way through all 
all of these dimensions, I portaled into one that reminded me of my dimension doors travels. With a llama in a waiting room and a couple signs just telling me to relax. I'm pretty sure this whole thing was about to explode. But I continued my way through all of the core dimensions, finding one that has a set of different beacons, including one with the netherite stairs, but the most important thing is hidden inside this chest. The footprints! Yes! The last hidden item. The footprints, the things we no longer leave behind. With all of the major things checked off of my bucket list, I grabbed a few pieces of flint and headed off to a dimension that I knew that there was a village inside, throwing down a fletching table to be able to trade for a whole bunch of arrows that I'd need for the dragon fight. But I remembered that there was one extra Easter egg dimension that had a special message waiting inside, which I wanted to check out before finishing this thing. Oh, why is it so far away? Pause right there. Don't worry. You'll see what that says, but only after I kill a dragon. And with an entirely full inventory and more than enough eyes to spare, I grabbed a book from one of the dimensions that I had visited previously that looked moderately normal. There were still end ships flying around everywhere, squares of random materials, but the eyes were heading in a proper direction. Now I had enough equipment at this time that I really wanted to know what would happen if you went through an end gateway in one of these worlds. And it ended up teleporting me a couple thousand blocks off in a random direction. When I threw a pearl, the eye doubled back. So it basically sent me out to where the stronghold ring would be which makes sense if you think about it in the overworld. Through a little bit of triangulation and a ton of lag, seriously, look at the thousands of string items that were floating in the water right there. I was finally able to identify the chunk that everything would be in. I waited around for a couple minutes so that all the string would despawn and started mining down, ending up in the stronghold and doing just a cheeky little bit of stronghold navigation. Once I found the portal and slotted in all the eyes, all I had to do was kill a dragon, and I had done this hundreds of times before. Um... Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm on the outer... I'm on the outer end islands. This might be good to find an elytra, but I need to go kill the dragon. I was a little short on pearls, so I made myself a little hidey hole and then made eye contact with a bunch of redditors, stabbing them in the ankles to get a bunch of different precious resources. I navigated around in the exterior end island, staying close to the edge that's right over that thousand block void towards the central island. I can bridge that far, but that'll take hours. What I'm really looking for is an end gateway, something I could throw a pearl through and teleport straight back to the central island, or at least I should? Hopefully, that makes sense in my head. I did eventually find one, pillaring up next to it, throwing a pearl through and teleporting right onto the edge of the middle island with the dragon bar at the top. This thing was actually possible. And in a playthrough that was marked by chaos and randomness and worlds that make absolutely no sense, a somewhat vanilla dragon fight at the end feels slightly anticlimactic, but remember, there's a secret message waiting for you right after I kill this thing. But with an enchanted netherite axe, with a bow, with infinite arrows, and I'm in full top tier gear, the outcome here is inevitable. With the dragon killed, I celebrated, jumped through the portal, and returned back to the one dimension for the thing that I promised you at the end. Hello. Only purpose of this message was to troll completionists and put my name... Well, that's... <laughs> that's weird. Oh, and it crashed. <laughs> How perfect. Huge thanks to my patrons named on screen right now. Join them on Patreon for early access on upcoming videos and spoilers of the next big announcement that will change this channel forever. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Good night.